Hello, this is Toa from Trifold Productions with another blended quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can apply a paint stain or a rust stain or any kind of stain to a wall non-destructively. And when I mean non-destructively, I mean that you don't have to apply that texture directly to a wall because that could lead to, one, you having to duplicate that the scene again in order to use that particular room or that wall. And two, this way you can actually pile up different textures on top of each other um, effortlessly without any issues at all. Now the first thing that you want to do is go to file and click on user preferences and then once you've done that because I've already typed it in but I'm going to do it again for the sake of this tutorial click within the search box and type in plane uh, Blender's acting up today for some reason. Let's type in plane. Okay. Plane, P L A N E. And you want to put a check box or check mark in this box that says import export. Import images as planes. That's the key thing. Because that's going to help us actually import the planes as they are without us having to prep it up when it's in Blender. And I've already downloaded some textures. Uh, from CG Textures. I'll leave a link of that in the uh, description below this video. And to ensure that your images are based or on top of a transparent or invisible background, it ha has to have a PNG extension. Not only that, but the background has to be checkered white and black. That means that the background is actually transparent. And here I'm going to press, uh, click on that and press Control C to copy the link or copy that address, web address there. <clears throat> then click on, actually press Shift A. And once the pop up comes up, you're going to navigate to the bottom of this pop up of mesh. Okay. And then go all the way down to images as planes. Click on that. It's already come up because I've already, you know, um, done this tutorial like four or five times. I think it's the sixth time I've had to do it. Click on that and press control. I'll actually click on this. And then press control V to paste that web address in there. Press enter and this comes up. And I'm going to navigate to where those paint stains are. And remember you can do this for paint stains or for rust stains or if you're into the gory stuff, blood stains. As long as the background is, has a trans, is, is transparent, you can use it. And let's pick this one. Then click on import images as planes, and we have that there. And it's on the wall. Now what we're going to do to ensure that this shows up properly up against the wall, we're going to pull this back. Now keep your eyes on this image to our right here because we want to pull this as far back as possible and then when it begins to disappear behind this wall pull it forward because that means we've gone too far let's zoom in scroll up on your mouse wheel there and then pull the green the green uh, directional arrow is the y-axis we're going to pull along there hold down your right or your left mouse button and pull back remember keep your eyes on this section let's pull back a little bit more and it disappears so that means we've gone too far and then there we go and we don't want it to let's scale it up a little bit so we can have like a definite stain there let's scale this up a little bit more and we're going to rotate it on the y-axis because we don't want it to be perfectly horizontal because we want it to look like someone splashed it on the wall so let's press R and then Y to rotate on the y-axis and let's tilt it and there we go and we're going to go to our render tab here and click on render to get a visual of what we've just done and there we go there's a stain on the wall probably should have more lights on this so we can see it a little bit better <clears throat> we have a stain there okay and let's do that one more time. Let's let's choose a, another. And I'm going to show you how we could use it non-destructively, but let's apply another stain there. Let's go to File again, and then let's go to actually let's go to Shift. I keep thinking User Preferences, but that's not how you import the images. It's Shift A. 
then mesh, go to images as planes one more time. And then because we've already um, gone through the process of navigating to the um, where the texture is, we don't have to do the whole control C control V again, but let's scroll down. And I'm going to pick another another image. Okay. Here we go. Let's pick this this purple splatter. Let's click on that. Import images as planes. Okay. And let's pull this one over to Okay, hope Blender's not freezing up again. Let's pull it over. And I'm going to scale this up. Press S and scale it up. Let's pull it back towards our our uh, our left here so we can see it a little bit better in the viewport. And then we're going to pull it down in this window with the uh, Z axis. Okay, let me pull it up a little bit, yeah, like that. On the axis, once again, we're going to pull it back. And once it begins to disappear again, that means we've gone to force to pull it up a little bit more on the Y axis. Pull it back a little bit, and just disappear. Let's pull it forward. Okay, there we go. And we're going to shift our light source so that we can see more. We can see more lights in this area. Let's. I'm using uh, another add-on that you have to pay for is from Blender Guru uh, Pro Lighting Skies. So that's why I'm this light source that I'm using. That's 180. I'm going to turn to 180. Okay, let's press F12 again, or render to see the results of this. Okay, let's give it a few minutes. There's more light that which is better. Okay, see, so we have two stains here. And the beauty of this, in terms of it being non-destructive, is what I'm going to show you next. Because we have these stains on the wall here, and they look like they are part of the texture. There's a lot of noise. I didn't turn on the denoiser. Let me turn that on so we can get a better, a better representation of what we're rendering. Go to that. And, okay, oh, there it is, denoising, okay. Is that you could, you, what you want to do to make this non-destructive and have this background or this room used again where you don't see the, the uh, stains is you want to transfer these stains to another layer. So click on the first stain and press M. And I'm going to put it on, just put it on the vacant layer, put it on this third bottom layer do the same thing with this one and also third bottom layer and now you can still use it you can still use this room and to you know bring back the stains again I'm going to hold down shift and then click in that little square at the bottom and then let's press F12 again or render and let's see the results again. Okay, yeah, the stains are back. So that's the non-destructive way of applying stains or rust or blood to a, a wall within Blender. So you can still use the walls again without having to duplicate the walls for um, further use. But we've, we've got the denoise on now so it looks a little bit better. And the reason why I kept mentioning um, Pulling these textures as close to the wall as possible is because if you don't, it'll look fake. And I'll show you what I mean. See, right now they're up against the wall really close, so that is a good sign that they're going to come out looking good. But let's let's pull this forward a little bit and let's see the results we get when we do that. And let's render it again. I'm using render because my keyboard shortcuts for some reason on my keyboard aren't, aren't working but you see this is what we're trying to avoid by pulling the textures as close to the wall as possible we don't want the shadows of the textures showing up on the wall we want them to be flush against the wall and having those shadows at all to give that impression that they're part of the wall but yeah that's my blender quick tip and I hope uh, this was helpful to someone so once again, this is Tola from Trifold Productions with another Blender Quick Tip. Let me pull this back one more time so we can get a better and ac accurate render before we sign out. Okay. 
And yes, that's the quick tip for today. I hope this was able, this tutorial was able to help someone. You know, be better at Blender and be better at uh, 3D animation. All right, uh, thanks for listening and watching, and I'll see you on the next one. You guys have a great day. Right, bye bye.